A 20 minute drive south of Frankfurt lies the German city of Darmstadt. And Darmstadt is one of the biggest manufacturers of television cameras in the world. Yes, when you're watching TV, the likelihood is that the camera used to film what you see was made here. But what happens to these cameras when they become obsolete and end up in a skip? Just outside the city lives Liam Ohanin. Originally from Beale in County Kerry, at his home in this sleepy suburb, Liam has set up a very unusual museum indeed. The possibility of preserving. The same thing that fascinates me still. I'm, I'm a historian, I'm, a, I'm an archaeologist as well. I'm fascinated with the past and I realise that today we make memories every day. Some nice ones we've made now in the last few days. <laughs> Liam loves collecting what captures those memories, television cameras and radio equipment. He is the proud owner of one of the biggest collections of vintage TV cameras and radios in Europe, which he gets from all over the world. The place is packed right up to the ceiling and the attic is full too. I have... Uh Radios from about 1918. I have televisions from 1927 to 1970 about. Magnetic tape recorders, wire recorders, gramophone, 100 record players I think at least. Could go on for about an hour. <laughs> Liam often loses track of time spending hours working on his radios in the basement. That's one of the things I could always do, that I could uh, forget everything. Concentrate, I'm gone. You can ask people that call me or t talk to me, maybe te tell me things I don't hear, and I'm fully concentrated. <laughs> his love of radio started early in life, when his grandfather was the first owner of one in Beale. We were was our window into the world. The people used to be able to fit into the kitchen to listen to the radio that would be outside the window as well. And I remember hearing the Beatles. I remember my older sister telling me, this is hot. This, you have to listen. You have to listen to this. A hard day's night. I can still remember hearing it. It's been a hard And I wasn't impressed. I didn't, uh, I didn't really like it. It wasn't the one that appealed to me. <laughs> Despite not liking some of the music that was coming out of the radio, Liam was hooked and began to collect radios from wherever he could get them. You know, one of the neighbours, the radio might have broke and they'd be dumping it or you'd find them someplace uh, or big somewhere. <laughs> His collection began to grow. And Liam then became interested in television cameras after a Ryark TV crew came to his house in 1962. I think the subject was small farms and how people were surviving in small places. And they filmed that. And I was fascinated with uh, Hollywood coming to Beale. <laughs> in the 10 years I have been here, I've increased the production and productivity of the place five times and now I have six children and find I can support them well. This is Liam working on the field at his farm in Beale as the crew filmed and even back then he couldn't take his eyes off the camera. Yes I remember the camera I remember it was it was a, a what I'd call now a movie camera with the camel's humps where the films were in handheld microphone that I think it was Father Peter Lemas held in front of me. Fast forward to the 1980s and Liam was finding it difficult to get work, so decided to head for Germany. I started working here as a carpenter. I, I, my first job was building a church. Uh, I was surprised because I never worked as hard in Ireland. You know, the Germans take work serious. 
I mean, in Ireland, uh, it's a much more relaxed and it's uh, first names and you, everybody is your friend. And in Germany, then you had, you were here, or Hanin fairly quick. And it, that it, it took a good while before the, you, you got really close to some of them, yeah. Liam and his German wife have been together now for 30 years and have two children. He has also three more from his first marriage. One of his daughters, Fiona, remembers having to go to radio fairs with him, where she would be the one doing the bargaining. She used to buy stuff for me. She knew her way around and with uh, uh, her nice smile, she was able to do good deals. He would send me off on the flea markets looking for stuff for him. And um, yeah, I, I guess I was not the, the baddest to buy things for him when I was small. Yeah, anything old. Um, and if I wasn't sure, I would go back and he would have a look at it. One of Liam's most prized possessions yeah, is a camera that he recently acquired. It was the camera that was used to film JFK on his historical visit to Berlin in 1963. When I got it, I was just lucky because I had been friendly to this cameraman. And when he was getting rid of it, he thought it was a good idea to give it to somebody like me. It Philip Kennedy saying the famous words, Ich bin ein Berliner. Today, in the world of freedom, the proudest boast is, Ich bin ein Berliner. These cameras were, at that time, very expensive. We were, we were talking about 250,000 German marks that time. That was uh, an astronomical <laughs> uh, uh, price. That uh, a car cost 5,000. So come on in. Hi, Liam. Uh, Liam runs the museum from his home, where he gets visitors from all over the world. But he doesn't charge an entry fee. He simply does it for the love of sharing his collection. This is my oldest television. This is from 1927. That museum is cool. It's very special on, on old cameras in collecting these and um, restoring these and, of course, to preserve them. This is a very special um, because in Germany uh, nobody preserved these old cameras and Liam is the only one who preserved them. Yeah, I, I'd have problems now if your camera broke down because it, most of the modern junk you can, you can, it breaks, actually breaks, but the old, all, it's all restorable. I can get a camera now from, we'll say 1950, and I can get it going again. But if I got a camera from 1990, it might be dead forever. More than the equipment itself, Liam loves the stories that come with the old pieces. Most people are amazed, yeah. And I think it's important to share it with other people. That's part of the fun for me. What I enjoy really most is the people, the stories the, 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 that they bring me. Sometimes their eyes really light up when they see this camera that they worked on 50 years ago. You know, and they, they're so proud of, that was a hard, time that time. The childhood of television and the childhood of uh, broadcasting, they started from scratch. Yeah, Hope to see you again soon. Thank you. Well, As well, a choose. Choose <laughs> yeah. okay. Bye. Liam, what's the dream for the museum? Do you want to keep it here in Darmstadt or do you want to bring it back home to Biel? I would like to find a, a, a sort of a building, maybe take it back to Biel. And I have only one Besides moving back to Biel, I have only one other small project that I have uh, that is missing from the, all this is cinema. That's my next uh, project uh, to get some old cinema equipment. You better not tell your wife that, Liam. She'll be angry. I hope she's not listening now. <laughs> so, some uh, uh, a projector, a few good old big loudspeakers. Uh, because cinema fascinated me just as long as uh, radio and television. Liam, do you think you'll ever stop or will you be collecting forevermore? Collectors never, never stop. 
A friend of mine with 82, he was found in his radio cellar. I actually come home and I find something outside the gate. Sometimes I don't know who the donor was. Come home, there's a radio outside the gate and looking for a home. <laughs>